and we're back with some more X4. And today we are going to do a whole bunch of factory work, but first we have to take care of a whole bunch of problems. The first thing was we were getting attacked by lots of little red ships the last time. Now, I stayed around here, killed all the red ships, but they kept respawning again and again and again. I mean, at one point I was watching one of my miners and it was getting attacked by a single ship. Then four more appeared out of nowhere. They, didn't, they just magically appeared. They just spawned. So that's when I started doing my research. It turns out you can get these things called infestations of bug people. So the bug people, it seems, were overspawning it, and I had to find the infestation and terminate it, which I did. It took ages. Really, we should have destroyers for this, but more on that later. We should have destroyers now already, but yeah, I, 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 never mind. After scouting around all the edges, we found it, we killed it, but now we're still getting red ships, which means there's another one out there somewhere. And there is a bit of a trick, it seems. If you go to make a new plot, uh, we want to create a new plot here and you put it down on the map, what happens is it highlights all the places you can't build, assuming you've explored the area already, which we have. And over here, you'll notice there's an unknown station in red out there. That's not actually the next tile, but it's in our sector. Hmm. That might actually, let's see if we can find somewhere else where that happens. Oh, would you look at that? There's another one and there's another one. This is a really handy way of finding them. Oh, it's just, Normally I'm against exploits, but in this instance, it's just a case of I'd have to send a ship around and it takes ages and eventually it'll find it. So now that we know where it is, we can uh, go kill it. And for that, we have this ship. It's our same ship, but we've upgraded the guns to something with a little bit more chunkiness to it. Hmm. Now, let's go pick a fight. It may take us a little while to get there. God, even at our speeds. Now, the annoying thing about these is we've brought a bunch of anti-station weaponry because there's going to be a station there to kill. Unfortunately, there will be some fighters. It turns out there's loads of silly ways to destroy fighters, so uh, let's not fight fair. Yeah, we are not fighting fair at all in this. In fact, we are going to uh, be a little bit exploitative in what we do to the AI because they're bug people. No one cares about bug people. It's like the bugs in Factorio. No one cares. It's like the insects in Rimworld. Everyone hates them. They're just free meat. And oh, there is our Huckleberry now. All right, let's uh, see how close we have to get before they start getting a little bit antsy in their pants. Now, we want to try and approach this from an edge. Um. Uh, never mind. They missed us. We want to try and come in at an edge and hide behind a chunk of the station so that it blocks a bunch of its defenses and makes our lives easier. That piece Unknown there on the station. edge looks nice. Now, that is what you call a bug infestation. Well, space bugs. I mean, they can't really have organic shells up here, it just wouldn't work right. So they've got these really weird triangular shell looking things. Okay, we need to tuck in nice and tight. See, the thing is, this thing has station defenses. They're not great station defenses, but we'd prefer not to get shot by them. And yes, yeah, someone's already shooting at us, but that's fine. That's fine. We are going to tuck in here. And then... We are going to do something stupid going to deploy laser towers. Now, laser towers are weak. Uh, a laser tower versus a fighter, the fighter will slaughter it. In fact, a few laser towers versus a fighter, the fighter will still win. But a hundred laser towers, it seems that might actually be a reasonably decent strategy. Last time I did this for the other infestation, I brought 50. This time, I brought a hundred. Uh, I need to find something, though, that deploys them a lot faster. This whole manual deployment thing is just, uh, yeah. Oh, finally. Okay. That's that all done. That's perfect. We can now uh, escape out of here. Uh, we can unpause the game. Who is shooting at us? Uh, come here for a second. Oh, right. There's a bunch of them. Well, they're going to have a bad day because, well, they're about to get shot at by about 100 laser towers. We just have to make sure our shields hold up long enough. Yeah, there goes another one. Why are my... I think we're trapped inside something or... Ugh. Here we go. Oh, there goes another fighter. And... Oh, some more fighters spawned over here. And there they go. <laughs> hey, buddy. Hey, come back here. Ah! Why are we drifting so... Why is our aim so horrible? I feel like we're surrounded by so many of these turrets, it's actually causing a bunch of problems with our navigation. Let's uh, get a little bit away from the turrets, maybe. Oh, wow. 
Yeah, that was... Ow. Yeah, everything's really sluggish and we keep getting knocked about the place. My god. Okay, okay. Can this stop knocking us about the place for two seconds? Oh my god. What the? No, it can't stop knocking us about the place. <laughs> well, okay, maybe I shouldn't have deployed a hundred laser turrets, but come on, it was hilarious. Uh, how, could, how could you give me the option to deploy a hundred laser turrets and then expect me not to deploy a hundred laser turrets? Um, that is beautiful. Right. I think the CAC should be just about out of chips. See, the bug people will keep spawning ships in here, but after a while the spawns sort of run out. Oh, actually, let's start drawing in all the surrounding stuff. They dropped a bunch of nice things. We can pick up shield generator coils, tuning software, extended fuel containers, crystals, all sorts of stuff. Hey, there's one. Hey, buddy. Come on closer. Come on. Oop, oop, oop. Come on. Oh, yeah. Deaded. Okay, then. So, laser turrets seem to be doing a wonderful job of keeping all of the small stuff off of our backs. Ah, Problem is, this thing's only lost 3% of its hull. That's because it's incredibly tough, and it takes a long time to kill. However, we brought guns that are absolutely horrendous at killing fighters, but... We actually do a decent amount of damage to, uh, hulls like this. As well as that, we do have that SATA module. Now, normally I wouldn't like to use a SATA module in combat. In fact, we should be doing this whole thing with a giant, uh, mm, destroyer, but... We don't have the money for destroyers. Well, no, we could. We could buy a destroyer from the Taladi, but... No. The Tilati just have just such terrible stories. I couldn't in good conscience ever buy one. So, once we've overheated, then what we can do is just hit Shift F4 to speed up time. And then our weapons can cool off. And we'll fire off a couple more shots. And then we hit Shift F4 again. So this is sort of like using a light destroyer. Oh, I think some more fighters have spawned in. I should probably start hoovering up the stuff with magnets. Wait, where are they? Oh, there they are. Thanks for pointing them out, guys. And there's the other one. <laughs> so anyway, where was I? Oh, yes. Uh, slowly but surely grinding the stand. This is going to take some time because even with these weapons that are good at damaging stations, it will take a little bit of time. And a hundred laser turrets, I might point out. This is like the... Um, the cheap way of not using a destroyer to actually kill one of these infestations. Okay. I think... I think it's busted. Wait, no, it's 9%. Oh, wait, yeah, yeah. This happened the last one as well. There's actually a chunk of it left alive over there. We've only killed half of it. Or most of it. There's like a chunk that's... Still not quite dead over there. But we can fix that. First, though, we have to pick up all of these laser turrets. Um, hmm. Where are we on the map? Here we are. So, we're going to come over here. We're going to go to property owned. We're going to pause it for a second. Go to ships and inventory. Wait, no. Deployables. Uh, object list. Deployables. And the great thing about this is it only lists stuff that's in your local area. So, hey, guys, do you want to list the deployables there? There we go. So you can see this is all of our laser towers. So we're just going to drag, select a lot of them, and we're going to go, I would like you to all deactivate. And we'll open up the map, unpause the game, and then we'll hit zero to suck them all up, or the O key. Uh, as long as we're within about, I think it's a kilometer, they'll all start gravitating towards us. And yum 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 yum. Uh, thank you for your dindins. And then off we go to find this last nine percent. This thing over here, yeah, yeah. That's the only thing that looks like it's still going. You gotta just be really careful exterminating all these things. 
What the hell? Who's shooting at me? Fine, I'm gonna hide over here. That was probably the base defenses. But it's fine. I think this is a good location to deploy. Not that we really need to, but at some point, more ships are going to start appearing. So maybe deploy about 10 or 15 turrets just to make sure we don't get killed by a bunch of fighters while we're doing this. Hey, there's one. There's two. And our ship is acting all wonky, probably because it's trying to poop out like 50 laser turrets. Don't worry, it'll calm down in a minute. Probably. Yeah, the... God damn. This thing is just not handling this deployment well. Let's back up a bit. There we go. I think we've got all of that out of our system. We deployed. Oof. Okay, we're done. Seriously, you saw how this went for everyone else, right? You, you do know what happened to the last of them. Yeah, that was sort of exactly what I was expecting to happen. Okay then, uh, let's just keep finishing this off. There can't be that much left of this. Oh, turn off that auto-rotate. It's driving me nuts. Hey, you. Get, okay. Stop messing with my aim. I'm trying to kill your home here or your nest. Yes, nest is probably more accurate. This is what this should be the final shot. And and there we go. About damn time. Right, I think we have finally killed off this infestation. It is dead. Installation, it is no more. Perfect. And we could probably take it for scrap or something, but no, I don't care. And what we got to do is just collect all of our turrets again and get out of here. Oh, would you look at that. It, uh, they still managed to spawn another infestation in before we left. Let's make sure there's no more installations around here. I'd like to create a new plot. Is there any, uh, any infestation? Oh my god, there's another one there. Any infestations that like to show themselves? No? No? Like, mm, like, those infestations were incredibly expensive. I cannot really stress just how bad it was. Uh, let me just uh, go and look through the logs we've got here for our... Sh so this was 5 hours 35 minutes ago, 37, 543, 544, 545, 546, 550. They destroyed so many miners. Millions in miners was lost because they just kept spawning groups of five. In fact, I even started investing in larger miners so that we wouldn't, they wouldn't die as quickly. Uh, uh, where is our peregrine? We're going to get our peregrine in here to help out, though. Honestly, I don't think the peregrine's going to be able to help out with, you know, this many ships. We're going to need to go over there. As we fly back, there is one good thing for us. This is attacking one of our big miners. Uh, the big miners are costing me about six million a pop, and they're only about four times better than the other miners, which are far cheaper. But the fact that they don't die like this does mean in the long run it'll probably save us money. Or if we just kill the infestations fast enough, we wouldn't have to worry about this so much. Uh, but that should bring them close into our station, and once they get close to that, they'll get shredded. Now that we have ensured peace in 18 billion, and that we're not going to get raiders coming along and destroying all our miners, we can finally concentrate on expanding this production. And the thing is, money-wise, I haven't been paying too much attention. Well, no, I've been paying attention to the money, I just haven't been figuring out where it flows from and where's the best money to get. Uh, but what I have found is you can go in here under transaction logs, and it shows you exactly what you've been spending and what you've got income, outcome, all that stuff. In fact, this is the last 60 minutes of transactions. Now, one thing we can do is we can actually sort it. And I labeled all our miners mine. Um, because of course I did. It just seems like the easiest way to do it. And this keeps track of every single trade they have done and all that have been sales. We have miners set up all across all of the sectors. Uh, wait, that's only 37 minutes. Give me the last 59 minutes. We have made about 4 million just from mining in the last hour. That's pretty good. Considering that these are just miners we've thrown out there, we're not defending them, we're not doing anything with them, they're just the cheapest bottom-of-the-barrel miners you can get for about 400 grand, and we just let them out there pulling in money, and every hour they pull in enough to build 10 more miners. So you can see, pretty handy. However, you know, some of them do end up dying. They're not, uh, they're not protected, they're in random locations. This is all of our miners here, from there down to there. 
I labelled them all as what they were mining and the location they were mining them at, just so I could kind of figure out where they were. This seems like a very convenient way to make early money. However, we started getting into factory building so that we could make more money. Ridiculous amounts of money was the plan. However, I've done it wrong. I didn't know what I was doing, so I just sort of stumbled through it, but I think I finally figured out what I should be doing and why. Alright, if we go into station overview, we basically wanted hull parts. That was it. We wanted to produce as much hull parts as possible and then sell those hull parts to the surrounding shipyards. So far, so good. Now, for some reason here, you can look at the economy statistics, but it doesn't actually tell you how much you've made in the past hour. Maybe I'm missing something here, but it, it, uh, whatever. the only way I could figure it out was I figured out exactly how much we're making and then how much we sell it for. The automatic pricing is set by the AI. So we're making about 5 million. 5 million in change is what we're making every hour because we're literally selling off the hull parts as soon as we get them. The reason I know that because if we go under our little uh, thing here, 18 billion, 18 billion high-tech factory it's called. This list is all of the ships we've assigned out to it. All of these ships, miners. Their jobs is to go get the raw resources. Uh, they are everywhere. They're just running around picking them up. We've got four large miners, um, three gas miners, and then a whole bunch of smaller ones. I should really rename some of them, but I got lazy near the end. These here, these are the megabase traders. Yes, I've already labeled a megabase, even though we're not even close. Their job is to sell all of the hull parts. They will actively go out, find people into hull parts, and sell them, them directly. They'll take them out of storage and just pop them over. There's some really nice stuff built into this game in terms of just managing empires. It's, it's, it's kind of nice. Now, then we've got two suppliers whose job it is to go and buy construction parts so that we can always have enough bits and bobs to keep our factories running or to bu keep building the, or expanding, the ever-expanding factory. But the most important bit is actually the captain or the uh, the manager of this place. This is our manager, Kokala something or... I can't... whatever. Their job is to tell people where to go, where to sell, what to buy, all that stuff. And this actually improves their management skill. The longer they're doing something, the better they get at it. It's actually a bit of a random dice roll, so it might take them forever to get to level 5, but they, we've got them up to level 5, and that is incredibly important. In fact, every single point is important. I immediately train them up to level 2 with some stuff I bought. But the reason for that is it's to do with distance. See, down here we've got max, max gate distance to gather resources. This means this miner will go out and be able to mine resources within 5 tiles, or 5 jumps. Not so much tiles as jumps. They'll pass through 5 gates to get to resources and bring them back. And by the same token, our traders will also path up to five gates to sell the stuff. So once you've got your guy in charge of here maxed out, you can pull resources. You can just vacuum resources from the surrounding area. And you can also sell stuff to, well, five tiles means we can sell to every single shipyard pretty much you can see there on the screen. All of them. Which means we have a huge market. In fact, most of our traders aren't making it past our adjacent tile. Even with 15 hull parts manufacturers we're not even saturating these two air two tiles. That's that's just horrendous. That is, we need more. In fact, we need to quadruple production. However, there's some other mistakes I made. Yeah, I made a lot of mistakes so far. But in all fairness, this game is pretty tough. It's uh, it's it's a bit of a learning curve on this one. I kind of like them though with a bit of a learning curve. You see, what I did was I started at mass producing food. I was like, okay, if we get our hands on people. Workforce allows you to multiply your productivity without actually investing any more resources. It costs you a bit of ice, but it's it's basically a way of multiplying your productivity without having to actually do anything else. Unfortunately, the mistake I made was I didn't count in the production time. As in, it takes, say, about 25 buildings to have 15 hull parts production facilities running. Like, with all the sub stuff you've got going on. So basically, most of the actual buildings are the hull part production. The rest of them are all just the support buildings that provide the, say, the graphene, the teladinum, all that stuff that goes into the hull parts. When we wanted to put on enough population to increase our, our production, we'd go from about 3.5 million to about 5.5 million, so we could get about 2 million more out of what we were putting in. It actually cost us another 18 to 19 buildings on top of that. So we have to build 18 to 19 buildings to just increase this production. And even after we built all those food-producing buildings to support our workforce, the workforce doesn't instantly magically appear. You have to attract the workforce there, which means it slowly increases, which means even after investing all that time and effort and money into building those buildings, you don't see an immediate return. It takes ages. So I think what we're better off doing, maxing out hull production first, and then we can chuck on, like once we've got hull production really, really high, then we can chuck on some humans. In fact, or some meat bags to help run the plants. Or it might be better just to make an entirely separate station that produces all of the stuff that human, or the... The people, well, I think we're using Teladis, whatever, 
So we give them all of the food and medical supplies, we just ship those into the station, meaning all we have to build here is the accommodation for them, and all of their medical supplies and food gets shipped in, so this cuts down on the amount of time we're wasting building non-productive parts to our factory. However, I didn't figure all this out until after I'd queued up massive amounts of command, so right now there is a bunch of Nostrop oil production going on, biomes, everything, all sorts of things that need to be finished out. I'm just going to let him finish. Canceling them now would... Uh, it's just too much effort considering how much time went into it. But that means there's a couple of hours I've got to burn. So I believe there was a race we were attending? Yeah, there was a race. Let's go back to that race, shall we? Now this place is relatively safe. After coming back to this guy's silly casino-looking thing, uh, we brought him a pilot. Uh, Thanks for your help. Well, we got one of our pilots to go do the job for him. Now he's told us we have to go follow someone. Uh, why do I always feel like we're doing... We're, we're the one doing all the work in this relationship. Oh, great. How far... Oh my god, how far are you sending us, you muppet? I don't think we've even explored some of these areas. Yeah, we haven't been back there in a while. Okie doke. Right now, we just cruising. I do like these little speed hyperways. I think some people don't like these. They prefer the, uh, the manual traveling, but I'm like, no, no. Anything that makes traveling around this place faster. I've even uh, specifically got us a very, very fast ship so that we, well, spend less time traveling. It's not a fighting ship. It's more of a scouting ship, but it does its job. Right now we're flying to Napoleon's Fortune 2 to do whatever this guy asks. So from what I can determine, someone's been using illegal wormholes to take shortcuts in a race. Um, and now to break it, we have to fly through it a bunch of times until it destabilizes. System, fortune. Where are we actually? Okay, so we're in Nopalia's Fortune. The other side of this thing is on... Stable Warp Anomaly. Entering system. Silent, Silent witness. Wow, that's actually a pretty decent sized jump. Uh, nope. Leah's fortune is over here. So we jumped from here all the way over to here. Silent witness. Hmm. That is actually quite a decent jump. Maybe we can't keep that. That would be excellent for uh, shortening some journeys. Oh, well. Looks like we're just going to have to fly through this a bunch more times. This feels like a really weird fetch quest of a sort. Oops, I think we destroyed it. So we came out here to do all of that and then we're done. Okay, the anomaly's faded away. Grant. Autopilot. This is the most pointless quest. You better give me that freaking. Uh, I want your casino in the end. I need the designs. Autopilot. It's the only Autopilot. reason I'm jumping through all these silly hoops for you. After that long, pointless drive around the place, we're finally back here and we're going to go to the gambling den. Now, please tell me. Oh, wait, no, we've still got that ship, don't we? We've got him a ship and a pilot. Now we've gone and destroyed a wormhole, so let's see, what do you got? There you are. All right, buddy. Don't beat about the bush here. So anyway, it turns out what happened was they were using wormholes. And because of those wormholes, they were taking shortcuts in their races. Since we've destabilized that wormhole, that guy's going to end up in God knows where. He'll probably die. But that's okay, because we'll win the race. Anyway, since you've done your part, here's the casino plans. Now go away. Oh wow, it's finally done. We've got it. We've got the casino piece. Um, now, we, we just have to build it, I suppose, which shouldn't be that hard. Uh, it'll be under storage modules? No, production modules. Welfare modules. Gambling den. Excellent. What's the encyclopedia entry for this, say? Uh, universal, yeah, 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 12 minutes, 10 seconds. A station offering a wide variety of, wide range of recreational activities can help set it apart from its competition and will improve conditions for its workforce. Increases the rate at which stations' workforces grow. This is exactly what we want. Now, uh, you. Where should we put you? Hmm. You know what? Let's, let's stick him right up here, right behind the landing pads. Just so that, you know, we, we can have more people showing up. In fact, we'll just do one. We'll do one for now. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll keep it that way. So, we've got one of those there. But I do want to make sure that that thing gets built sooner rather than later. What are we currently building? We're building a Tilati biome over there. Tell you what, you. It will put you. Yep. There you go. By moving that around a bit, it, it threw this entire section to the back of the queue, and now the gambling den is in second position. Nice. Once the gambling den is done, people should start to flood into this place, and all of this industry we've made towards making all of this housing, the food, the medical supplies, all that should finally pay off. Well, that's the hope. I have been looking around to see what we can do in the meantime while we're waiting for our station to build all this stuff. We just 
Well, we have a lot of things building at that station. Let's see, the welfare module will be complete in 12 minutes, but then once that's done, we still have to produce all of those Teladi biomes, which will take about 12 minutes a pop. Yeah, w once they're all done, though, I'm going to take a pause, and I'm going to wait until their builder buggers off so we can bring in our builder. I've bought our own builder so that our builder can do it better and get some experience out of it. However, you can't actually fire a builder mid-job, it seems. Uh, the dishonor would be too great. Uh, they would, you know, swear a blood feud to you and try and kill you. You, just, you can't seem to get rid of a builder no matter what you do. I googled it, I looked it up, and people were like, no, no, once you hire a builder, you're stuck with them until the job is done. Uh, so yeah, that's that's a thing we're just going to have to live with for now. So the first thing I'm going to do is take care of a quest that, uh, that annoying swimming thing has been bugging me about for ages. There's an unidentified vessel near our place that's messing with his scans, and they've bugged me about it about a dozen times. So I'm going to go find the vessel that's bugging him, and, you know, have a chat with him or shoot them or whatever. Actually, I should probably bring along a gunship. Hmm, maybe later. Well, that looks suspiciously like a ship that's doing something it shouldn't be. Okinawa. Research. Ah, research vessels. Right, we're going to be dealing with an annoying scientist. Hello, I'm the science guy. I have been trained classically in speaking through my nose in three different dialects. This is traditional for all scientists in this universe. And we need your assistance. It turns out, despite having a giant science ship and a huge budget, we forgot to bring some rather basic stuff. So we're going to need you to fetch us ten antimatter cells, and then we can stop being such a pompous ass. Well, actually, no, we're still going to be a pompous ass, but we'll be that somewhere else. So if you could you run along and get those, that would be great. Thank you. All right, we're back. Autopilot disengaged. Oof. That autopilot has a really good... Docking granted. Damn, that autopilot was good. Got us real close. Okay, we'll pop over here. Nice ship. I can't wait to get my hands on a ship big enough to start docking ships. Ah, oh, here we go. There's your ten antimatter cells. Now that you've got them, bugger off. Well, surprise then, you're not done with us yet. Uh, it turns out there's a whole bunch of other stuff we need you to do, so uh, if you could do that and stuff, maybe we'll go away then. Maybe. No promises. Oh, for the love of... Fine, so you want me to get three ships and position them at those different locations. Right, you know what? That is completely doable. I definitely have a bunch of scout ships lying about the place that I am no longer using. Where are all those Terran scout ships I bought to just scout out locations? Here we are. All I gotta do is line them up to the locations. Aha! We have all our data now. That's wonderful! Despite our catastrophic incompetence and having to rely on the kindness of strangers, we've still managed to get it all done. I'm pretty sure I'll become famous because of this, because, you know, that that's what all the scientists want and things. Anyway, this time we really are going away, we swear. For our next quest, I thought we'd look into getting some ship modifications done. Looking around at all the ships, I kind of would like some better engine mods or some thruster mods. Right, so we'd go somewhere and look at some things or we have to race. Well, I'm bringing the zippy ship. Yeah. Can I help? No. Goodbye. Go away, you. Go back into your little hole. Looks like we're heading down to Grand Exchange down here to go on a bit of a race. Time trial. Great. Mm, I don't think my skills have increased too much. Maybe I should get better thrusters for this ship. You know what? It's fine. I'll just muddle my way through it. I don't think it's going to be that difficult. Where is this race? Sorry. Time trial. If it was a race, we could just shoot the people and be done with it. Oh, and I equipped it with a shotgun. The last one got destroyed in unforeseen circumstances. So the new one has a shotgun. For no reason other than I thought it'd be slightly different. Okay. Hey yourself. Go! Where are we headed? That seems really handy. Considering our straight line speed is almost six kilometers per second, I think we'll be fine. Well, while that was going on, it turns out one of our ships has gotten itself into a lot of bother. Uh, you, I want you to flee. Yes, I want you to flee because that right there, that's a K-Destroyer. K-Destroyers are very, very, very dangerous. Uh, they are incredibly tough and you are a tiny little ship. Like you're a medium-sized ship. We're going to do, get rid of collect drops for you. you you're, you're never going to do that again. Uh, we're going to have you just flee. Yeah, you are, your job is to flee out of there. Hopefully the turrets will buy you just a scooch of time. No, 
I don't think they will. I'm pretty sure that Kay Destroyer is just going to turn you into Swiss cheese. Ugh. Nope. Nope. Keep running, buddy. Nope. Never made it. Oh well, we tried. We have 26 seconds to get all the way there. Somehow I think we're gonna make this. How's that K doing? Oh my god, the K is getting chewed up by our turrets. A hundred laser turrets. They definitely make a mess. Very good work. I have submitted your results to the governing body of the sport. You can go and collect your prize. Perfect. Now we can actually get some mods. If I had known how easy that was, we would have done that a lot sooner. I'm pretty sure those mods are going to come in incredibly handy. And at the same time, this K is getting its butt kicked by a bunch of turrets. Wow. That is, uh... Well, that's dead. Right, it's a pity we lost a ship, but, uh... A hundred laser turrets really do make a hell of a mess. I should probably explain what's going on with all of those laser turrets. Uh, this is Hatikva's choice. Different location, but this is the one where at the start we were collecting all of the stuff that died. Like the, uh, the Xenon would appear here, they'd get into fights with people and then we'd collect up all the stuff they dropped. So what I've done now is I've deployed about a hundred laser turrets outside of that same gate and we have a Peregrine. It's like a little gunboat ship and its orders are currently to collect drops. It goes around and collects all the stuff that drops here. So there's a decryption module there, there's something else. And then every so often, we just uh, teleport around. Now, we have the teleport ability researched up here. It's teleportation range, so we can teleport up to to five systems, from within three systems to five. We can teleport up to five systems away, meaning we can go, Hey, buddy, how you doing over there in Hatikva's Choice? We would like to teleport to you. And then the teleport will kick in in a second. Disengage. Entering. Can I help? Can then go up and talk to him and say, hey, give me more info. I would like you to hand me all of the stuff that's in your inventory. Thank you for that. And now that you've handed me all of that, I think I'll teleport back to the ship I was on. And that'll take a second or so. But what that means is we've been collecting a lot of stuff in our inventory that's worth a lot of money. In fact, we have about 20 million in stuff in our inventory. Also, a whole bunch of space fly eggs, caviar, things we should probably sell. Ooh. Yeah, but this is just an automated way of harvesting those guys, which I think is kind of fun. So I'm letting them do it. Unfortunately, though, we do occasionally lose a ship, like that Peregrine that just ran into a K. There was no way it was surviving that, unless it was behind the turrets. If it was behind the turrets, it might have actually survived. Which reminds me, I should buy a bunch more of these Peregrines and a bunch more turrets and uh, set up a few locations. What I'm trying to do is cap off the Xenon to prevent them from expanding. Right now you can see this Xenon has made an incursion in here and has started setting up a base. It will eventually wipe out this faction if I'm not careful. You're in a race against time to stop the Xenon from killing everyone. You see, everyone's sort of morons in this universe. You're the only one with a bit of a brain. It's how you're able to go in a few days from having nothing to millions is because no one seems to realize, hey, there, there, we could just buy a mining ship and mine that place over there. It's, ugh, never mind. If it did, I suppose if it wasn't that way, you never would be able to... Autopilot. Hmm. Autopilot. I think we just passed a ship. That we were supposed to talk with. Phoenix Vanguard. Huh. Anyway, yeah, the reason that everyone's so stupid, which is how you're able to actually make so much money and do everything so well, is because everyone basically just doesn't know what they're doing. Okay, that's pretty awesome. I do like that we're just landed on a ship. We're walking outside it. There's that giant engine over there and another one over there just propelling us along. That, um... Hello. Yeah, yeah, I like it. So you're the guy who's going to give us our parts, are you? I'm here for the prize. Excellent. Here you go. Antimatter injector sensor zero of one. So, after we got that guy and we gave us the parts and we finished off the research, Nemesis. we now have Vanguard. some new options when it comes to our ships. Let's go investigate them. Basically, we can apply mods to our ships to improve their performance in specific areas. All we have to do is get to the modification bay. To do that, you want to go to a shipyard. Uh, I'm at a Taladi Wharf. I probably should not be at a Taladi Wharf. I should probably be at the Paranid one if I'm going to be modifying this ship. We're modifying our uh, our frigate class ship. Damn, that thing looks awesome, even from the back. So we pop over to the elevator and we want to go to the ship dealership. Come on, come on. Let's go, 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 go. Uh, over here? Yes, there's a workbench. We've got your crafting bench, but we've also got a workbench. And here we can start applying mods. Now, we have already, actually I should probably go back out here for a second, research-wise, we've already knocked out chassis mods and basic engine mods. I want to do shields next, but that means if we go in here, 
we can go to engines. Give me engines. Engine modifications. This is the one I've been looking at. Twisters. This will give us more maneuverability. Now the thing is, to use it, you need to have one basic fuel injector and three extended fuel containers and three Navidium Oxide. And it turns out, having a bunch of ships hanging around outside gates, blowing stuff up with the 100 laser towers as backup, and collecting all the parts means we have loads of parts to install mods. Now we can reinstall the very basic ones. The enhanced quality and exceptional quality are locked behind further research. But I'd like some more maneuverability. So down here you can see what our ship has in terms of uh, maneuverability. We've got straf, straf speed, yaw, pitch, and roll. And the higher that is, the more nimble we'll be in combat, which means less likely rare to get sideswiped by fighters. So let's uh, install that. Ooh, it's good. Okay, unfortunately it does have some negatives. It has up to one more property, and that extra property is a negative to your strafe, which is not good. It's not good at all. Also, we rolled really low. You can get between 35 to 45 percent on your engine rotation thrust. We got 35.67. We literally rolled bottom of the barrel. So let's roll it again. Actually, let's dismantle that. And let's install it a second time. We got 36 percent. Oh, you... Fine, give me one more roll. 37 percent. One more. 35 percent. One more. 36 percent. One more. 35 percent. It's 37. You know what? It's fine. We're going to leave it at 37. That is um, a waste of a lot of money and parts. But we've got some more strafe speed. At, or, sorry, we've got some more yaw pitch and roll, which will make us much more like a fighter in handling, which is great for a ship of our size. Now, you can only get one from in here. There is loads of things you can do. You can increase your travel time or something like that, or you can increase your afterburner speed. There's a whole bunch of different boosts in here. Oh, crab. You can increase your strafe. However, I'm probably sure that it affects something else negatively. Eh, never mind. Uh, the other thing we've got access to is chassis modifications. And looking through all of these, the one I like the most was the mass mod. Uh, this will reduce your ship's mass. I like that idea. I could be wrong. If people have ideas on this as much the best to use for a medium-sized ship, let me know. But from what I can figure, this should reduce our mass. will increase our acceleration. So we'll install that uh, between 4.7 and 16.7. A minus eight. Oh, I think we can roll a little bit higher than that. You can see it increased our strafe, our, our strafe acceleration and our regular acceleration by a bit. I'd prefer if we get ugh, eight percent. No, better. Come on, sixteen point three eight. Yes, yes, yes. I will keep it. Thank you kindly. So that means our ship now can yaw pitch and roll. Well, yaw pitch and roll faster. Has slower, ex slower strafe, but faster acceleration. Yes, that's what I was most interested in. Oh, and we have to gain weapon. Uh, we have to gain data on three weapon types because that's the next one: basic shields. And I presume that means we either have to shoot someone with three different weapons or get shot by three different weapons. Uh, you know what? Let's go. Maybe go to shooting McBang Bang here. This is not the first shooting McBang Bang. The, the, the I think the first shooting McBang Bang died. This is the second shooting McBang Bang. Uh, this one has two different weapon types on it already. In fact, actually, we've got three, now that I think about it. We do have black turrets. You know what? Let's leave it then. We've got three weapons on this. Let's go shoot us some stuff and see if we can knock out this science. Well, well, well. We managed to find ourselves a little, uh... Ooh. M. Let's go take care of this guy while we're on the way. Yeah, we've got a few guns we can use against this guy, and hopefully we can get enough to get some damage in on him. He looks to be very dead. I think we got him. Hey, did you leave some stuff behind? Ooh, there's crates. I am a little bit of a loot rat, so if that's some crates you've got there, I will totally take all of those. Ooh. Thank you kindly. Damn it. We had that mission active. Uh, two more weapon types. Gain data on two more weapon types. Zen S Impulse Projector Mark One. Oh, so we have to get hit by three different weapons. Well, that's going to be... Well, it won't be that hard. There'll be plenty of weapons there to hit us. I think we're probably going to aim for some... Well, that one or that one. Yeah, we'll hide behind one of those and do our, uh, our shooting. Oh, I think we just got money for that. We're pretty much signed up with every police force in the galaxy. You can sign up to police forces as you become... Get up to ten reputation with it with a side. Hmm... Okay, let's quickly tuck in behind that sucker over there. Ah, uh, mega-based trader. Where are you? 
One second. Well, there is a plunderer Phoenix Sentinel that's causing issues. I feel like I should go back and kill that thing, but I think for now we're just gonna drop cargo. Yeah, that might be the safe bet. Otherwise, I think that ship is dead. Any hurry. Ah, yes. We were going to try and uh, sneak in here. Right about... There. And then we'll just start hitting B like crazy. Because we've got laser turrets. Yay. I have got B slaved to the key that allows us to deploy laser turrets. So I'm just going to deploy about 100 laser turrets on top here that should hopefully keep us safe. And spread out enough. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, it seems to be working. Uh, we still have to get hit by two more weapon types, though. And we definitely have released more than a few laser turrets. Oh yeah, I think we're done. That's all the laser turrets. Okay, let's go get hit by some stuff, shall we? I mean, we can poke our head out and let someone get some shots off. Our shields are still maxed out, so we can take a hit or two. Hey, come on! Shoot us. Oop, I think we're still maybe inside a turret or something. If you end up inside a laser turret, it messes with your navigation. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of dead bugs going around these days. Now then, we should be able to begin our research. Excellent. I to see how this turns out. Perhaps you should no, 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 it's fine. We can hang around here and just uh, blow this stuff up. <laughs> uh, also, we get to collect more parts that we can turn into things that we can build into our ship. That's nice. You can see it down here in the radar. You can see all those grey boxes coming towards us. Ooh, look, enemies. Prezzies. Oh my god, that's so many prezzies. You know what? This is taking far too long. And we don't have to do it this way anymore. I've just realized something. We go under player information, we are now up to 20 with the Paranid. Which means we can buy destroyers from them. And destroyers will make very short work of stuff like this. And I think that should be our next port of call. What? What are you doing to my ship? Like, are you giving it a steam cleaning or something? Like, what's your job? You're a crewman. Right? Okay, that's, uh, that's a thing that happens. Anyway, we've come all the way to this parted ship at yard dock because now that we've got up to 20 liking with them, they'll finally sell us the big ships. But first you have to come and chat to them and they'll probably say some junk to us that we're not going to listen to. Uh, yes, let's receive our rank. Oh god, you're so boring. Skip! Hi! I am extremely pompous and boring. I am going to talk a whole bunch. You will be unable to skip this dialogue because the game devs are cruel and like to inflict unusual punishments on you. So yes, listen to me yak away forever and ever and ever. So with all of that out of the way with, uh, we can... Oh, show me your licenses. We can now... We've already got the police one. We can now buy a trade subscription, which means we can see all the... All of their stations, we'll be able to see what's going on with them. Which is actually not too bad. We could also buy a whole bunch of their nicer blueprints, including some of the large and extra large ships. That's also very nice. Uh, but more importantly, we can now go out and we can buy big ships off them. So you, buy ships, buy extra large. Actually, no, let's go with large for now, and we should be able to get the... Ooh, what's the Odyssey E Destroyer? Eh, and the Odyssey Vanguard. Okay, so the ha I do like the look of the hairdryer. Hmm. Hair dryer looks pretty good, but which one of these is better? You know what? I'm going to have to do a bunch of looking and checking and seeing and, you know, looking up numbers and stuff. But we're going to be grabbing one of these and then we're going to be smashing some of those uh, cack bases. Those bugs, they need to be annihilated. So annihilating some bugs, one of these seems like a fun proposition. But anyway, that's going to be for the next one. When it comes to our actual production base, it's actually finished. It's caught up with all of the, the human resources stuff. So now we can double hull part production. I've also had to hire a few more traders. Uh, one of them got destroyed, so I think we'll buy about four more and check one. But you know, that's all going to have to wait. 
This game soaks up so much time. Checking on Steam, I'm up to 99 hours already. Yep, yep, totally worth it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got to go fix a factory. We're going to have to expand this quite substantially. I've got to double it. Twice. Uh, maybe not the, the personnel storage areas over there, but all the production stuff's got to be doubled. And I think it's going to look glorious when we're finished. So I'm going to need to expand out the solar. You know what? That's for the next episode. For the next episode, it's going to be, we're going to have lots of money and we're going to have lots of destroyers. And it's going to be all about wiping out some infestations and maybe taking on a few of the bigger opponent opponents like the Xenon. That might be interesting. Anyway, I'm going to cut this out here. I uh, hope you enjoyed and good luck. Queen's Guard. <laughs>